Gretchen, for that great introduction. I am so honored to have your support and to stand with you and our brothers and sisters in the labor movement. Thank you also to the California Young Democrats for organizing this event to help get out the vote in this critical election. And thanks to my wonderful wife, Chrissy, for being there with me every step of the way. Can you give my wonderful wife a round of applause? I love Chrissy, too. On November 6th, this country faces what I believe to be the most important midterm election in our history. And it will be won or lost by people between the ages of 18 and 35. In 2016, 31 million voters in that age group, all very much eligible to vote, decided not to. The result was Donald Trump and Charlottesville and leaving the Paris Climate Accord and a tax cut designed to benefit the wealthiest 1% of Americans. And Justice Neil Gorsuch and Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Tonight, I want to talk to you about two very different futures. Here's future number one. You stay home on election day and Republicans stay in charge, and your health care gets taken away, and your student loans become more impossible to pay off, and places like Pulse and Parkland are joined by many more preventable tragedies. In that future, the feeling of apathy gets worse. You feel more and more disconnected from your government, more unseen, more unheard. Your faith in your country dims, and those old cries about the greatness of America begin to sound hollow as this nation continues to represent things you have never believed in. Your government no longer cares when Russians violate elections or when Saudis murder journalists. It no longer, it no longer treats people equally in the LGBTQ community. It no longer values science even as climate change deepens and grows more violent. It no longer stands up to hate-filled rhetoric, and, is, and, and it has replaced all civil disagreement with toxic partisanship, the likes of which we have never seen. Is that the future you want? Good, me neither. I'd like to offer you a very different future. In this one, you, you, you take the time to vote, and you get your friends to vote. And we flip the house. And we begin to undo the damage of 2016. Suddenly, suddenly government is fighting to protect your health care and your environment. Government is valuing your education and helping you to manage those onerous student loans. Government suddenly becomes a lot less corrupt and a lot more humane. You have representatives who actually come home to their districts for town halls. They listen. They see you. They are you. Sounds better, right? The irony, irony is you get to decide which of these futures comes to pass. You have that power. For those that brought your ballots tonight, you are literally holding that power. That's the future we're fighting for, isn't it? Now, when I started this campaign, I was planning to run against Congressman Darrell Issa. held this seat for far too long. I'm an environmental attorney and a clean energy advocate, so I sent the congressman, I sent the congressman a copy of the book, Climate Change for Beginners. It's about 180 pages. It's written at a sixth grade reading level, has plenty of pictures. I don't think he ever read it. The good news is that after 68 weekly protests in front of Congressman Darrell Issa's office, he finally decided to retire rather than run for re-election. But now his hand-picked successor, Diane Harkey, is running in his place. 
She also denies the existence of climate change, often saying that she is not a scientist. Well, in a district like ours with some of the best climate scientists in the world at Scripps in UC San Diego, she simply doesn't have the luxury of being that uninformed. She also said that if we have more mass transit, we will all be, and I quote, forced to ride bikes and take trains and hose off at the bus depot. Yes, she said that. No, I'm not kidding. Finally, she told Breitbart, that if Democrats win back the House, and I quote, it'll be like California all over the nation. statement to make considering we're both running for office here in California. I happen to love California. I was born and raised here. In fact, I've never been prouder to be a Californian. We celebrate our diversity. We're a hub of innovation. We protect our environment and we believe in economic opportunity. And I think we could more use more of those California values in Washington, D.C., don't you think? This is our fight. We're in it, like every candidate and elected official here tonight, for your health, your education, your environment, your safety, and your future. And tonight, we ask you to become a part of that, not just to vote for us, but to fight alongside us, to volunteer, to phone bank, and to knock on doors. You, you will be the difference, literally, between success and failure, between truth and lies, between democracy and fascism, between clean air and clean water and the swamp. And if we work together, there is nothing, nothing that can stop us, right? So are you ready to vote? Are you ready to win this election? Are you ready to get to work? Let's get the job done together. Thank you all so much.